Hey team, spring is in full throttle around here with everything just kind of getting surges of life. So our strawberries are blooming and there's little tiny straws on there. Our blueberries are going nuts. We've got two new garden beds in and planted them out with broccoli, spring onions, lettuce, and a bunch of flowers. It just feels like a really kind of lush, abundant time where all of nature is just kind of breathing life into itself and we are kind of getting life from that. Pretty magical. <laughs> anyway, there's somebody you have to meet. I've been wanting to introduce you for a little time. Some of you might already know this person. I first got to know this person a few years ago, maybe four years ago, um, through an author and also now my friend Robin Grill. He's a psychologist and does a lot of parenting stuff. He's pretty wicked. And getting to know this person has 100% changed my life. And I've been on a little bit of a mission to learn more so I can kind of share this person with you. Actually, it's not really one person. It's not this person. It's more like seven billion people. The person I'm talking about, my friend, is your inner child. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but you have just had a very emotional response to something that was only a little bit of a deal. So like, your kid maybe does something slightly irritating, and instead of having a slightly irritated response, you kind of blow up. Or perhaps a friend stitches you up, maybe doesn't show. And instead of thinking, ah, oh, you know, we all kind of mess up. I wonder what happened for her. You have this huge like, oh, nobody loves me. She must hate my guts to stitch me up that way. You know, you have this kind of out of proportion response to an event. That's a really good sign that your inner child is at work within you. That that event has provoked your inner child to kind of say, hey, that's not cool, man. Because of something that happened to you way earlier on in your life. So the whole inner child thing, it kind of began in the 70s with a doctor called Lucia Capitano. Tioni. And it's been furthered by other psychologists like I think John Bradshaw have um, started therapies based on this healing of your inner child. Because if you can actually track back to those first events where you were kind of a bit hurt or a bit shamed, if you can heal them, that has massive beautiful repercussions for your adult life. You can essentially go back and heal all of these little events so that as an adult, your responses to things that happen to you are far more in proportion and far more kinder and gracious and loving, which is obviously great for you as an adult. It's been great for me as an adult. Doing some work healing my inner child has made me a far calmer parent by a mill, and I still lose it every now and then. But on the whole, I'm just so much more calm, and I'm a much better wife, and a much better friend. Because instead of a little six-year-old kid responding out of me and basically having a tantrum, I can respond out of the whole of my brain, not just a tiny little memory that has been woken up. So I do a little bit of this work. I do it in circles, at retreats, and in inner child workshops. And so often, the stories that come out are based around shame and they're based around intrinsic needs that children have that weren't met, that weren't responded to, but were kind of shamed instead. The stuff that women are dealing with as adults, one of the strongest ones that I see all the time that constantly comes out is when children are shut down because of their emotions. So they experience something really big for them and the adults in their life tell them to get over it or to shh, 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 hush now, hush now, or to go to their room for making too much noise. And what that leads to as an adult is a fear of expressing your emotions or a fear of standing strong or a fear of using your voice for something. Only when you can go back and respond to the inner child in that moment where they were shamed to not use their voice, will you ever really confidently be able to express your emotions and yourself as an adult. So today I just wanna invite you on a journey of getting to know your inner child. It can be really simple if you want it to be so. First of all, I suggest that you do a little bit of journaling around it. Maybe just go back to some key moments 
in your childhood and write about some of the feelings you were having or the way you were affected by events that took place in your life. Just do a gentle bit of exploring around your childhood and see if anything is alive for you. To go a step further, the next time you have one of those big responses to a an event, one that's out of proportion, I invite you to take your journal again and just do a little bit of delving and see if you can remember the first time that you had that feeling, the first time you experienced a flash of rage or the first time you had an experience of feeling really hurt. Try and remember the circumstances and exactly what happened to you and how it felt. And then this is where the healing comes in and this is um, a method suggested by Brené Brown in her shame stuff. And this is to share your story and have it received with empathy. Find someone that you really, really trust and then tell your story to them about that first incident where this happened to you. And give them the opportunity to just say a few sentences back to you, something along the lines of that should never have happened to you, that's not okay that that happened, you are enough, there is a place for you in this world, your voice should be heard, your emotions are valid, that kind of it doesn't have to be a therapist, it could just be a friend that you know is kind of loving and, and emotionally available to you. The way that I do a lot of this and my friends do a lot of this is through our moon circles. So every month we meet on a new moon and we light fire and we, we pretty much just tell our stories and they might be stories from the last few weeks, they might be stories from my childhood, but when we tell those stories where we felt oh, those big emotions, particularly the, sh the, the feeling of being shamed and we share that and it's received by the group in the strong holding of love and support that you have at a moon circle it is so powerful and it is so healing if you want to learn more about moon circles I highly recommend my book moon circle I'll link to it below but it tells you how you can set up a moon circle what the point of it is and you can just have a really informal moon circle with your friends do check out my wee book I'll link it below there's other things you can do to get to know and to support and honor your inner child and here's one this is like my favorite one spend more time doing the things that you loved as a child if there was stuff that you loved to do pre-11, that was when you were in your most kind of natural state, possibly the most you you've ever been in your life because post-11 we start to respond really strongly to the expectations and norms around us and from 11 it's common for us to stop doing the things that we love and just start doing things that we're kind of expected to love or to do. So particularly have a think around 11 or just before 11 about the things that you love to do and then find a way of bringing them into your life. And it is almost certainly completely frivolous. <laughs> Minus things like um, playing with clothes and dressing up and sewing things and designing clothes. It's drawing and painting. Yours might be climbing trees or dancing or playing games like knock and run. You know when you knock on someone's door and run away? That would be so funny if you started doing it as an adult. Please do it. <laughs> Someone do it. <laughs> But when we start doing more of that stuff in our everyday life, we're learning to love the little inner child that we're carrying around with us. But we're also just bringing in so much more joy into our life. And when we act out of joy, that's where all com compassion and grace and love comes from. So have a little sit down, write down all the things you used to love, and then just see if there's a way you can bring them into your life a little bit more. And just watch the changes that occur to your happiness levels. Also, speak to yourself as you would speak to a small wounded child. So when you like stuff something up that was kind of important, instead of berating yourself like, oh you idiot, you're always stuffing things up, why can't you do better? You would never speak to a small young child who's been really hurt that way, would you? Instead, employ the voice that you would in your better moments with your child. You might say something like, that didn't go quite to plan, did it? Or, oh, we kind of did mess that up a little bit, but we're still brilliant. <laughs> or you might say, oh, that was a flop. We'll try again tomorrow. Or, we failed at that, but we learned a whole lot. Changing this narrative, changing this self-talk is so important. It lifts the ceiling on what we can achieve and what we can imagine. Because instead of acting under this oppressive kind of heaviness of, oh, we're just trying to 
do better every day but we keep sucking we're like acting out of grace and we're saying oh we tried and we failed but we're still flipping magnificent <laughs> so i really urge you to do that to start talking to your to your inner child with kindness and grace and with real love and see what magic that brings into your life okay lastly this is a little bit of a, a funny one but and it comes from this really beautiful artwork that i saw and it's a sculpture and it's two adults back to back and then inside of those adults there's two toddlers trying to connect through the bodies and it's just such a beautiful profound image to hold in your mind when you are in conflict with someone so when say you're having a bit of a boofty with your spouse or something and you just keep nagging or arguing just picture the inner child in you who's probably doing a lot of the speaking on your behalf just picture them and also picture the inner child in your spouse or whoever it is you're arguing with because probably their inner child is directing a lot of their feelings as well. They're probably acting out of hurt and shame and fear from when they were a little kid. And I think picturing each other's inner child, I think that can really bring into perspective all of our arguments and all of our conflicts when we realize that at the end of the day we're often just re reacting and responding out of those big feelings from an event that's not even anything to do with this current event. So there we go. That's a brief, a super brief introduction to a person you have absolutely got to meet today if possible. I'd love to talk with you more about this so let me know if any of this was resonant and if you want to hear more about it. And here's a quick challenge. In the comments, let me know something you're gonna do this week that is gonna be responding to your inner child. So something that you love to do around age 11 or younger that you're gonna try and do this week. I'd love to hear. Mine is painting. This week I'm gonna just do way more painting because it's a completely joyous act of creativity. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are in the world. So much love to you. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my Patreon. There's heaps of resources on there. I do live streams every month exactly on this kind of topic but there's also workbooks you can work through and plans for parenting and happiness and that sort of thing so um do head on to my patreon you can find a link below much love and stay radical Mwah.